Okay, so in my last video, I was refining the edges of this by cross filing and draw filing with a file. Again, I said you could uh, use sandpaper or glass paper. This generally works quite well with wood, but we worked in that sense because there wasn't much to take off at that particular time. Now, what I could do now is assemble this mould. It's just a three part assembly like this, effectively. And if I pour my pewter in there, um, it will produce my mould, okay? But what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more interesting is I'm going to put an acrylic insert inside and then basically encapsulate that around the outsides with the uh, pewter. So it's just a, a simple insert there. But obviously what I could do is, if I'm quite skilled with some CAD software like 2D Design or something like this, or Illustrator maybe, I can design and engrave details on there. And again, this is acrylic, but it's just been engraved with some designs and patterns on there, okay? Now... This little insert, um, you would think, because it's acrylic, it's going to melt, but because the heat of the pewter is, it, you know, it cools very quickly, it's not actually hot for a long enough period while it's cooling to do too much damage, okay? The only area where this might be an issue is if I use uh, an acrylic piece that's very, very thin. So if I've, if I've cut this and it's got sections that are maybe one or two millimetres, it may well damage or, or, you know, reduce the size of the overall shape, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously is I want to put this in the center of my product, okay? Now I'm going to do this quite roughly, okay? So I'm, what I'm going to basically do is put my template on top of my backing piece of the mold, and I'm just going to first draw around the outside like this, okay? And then I've got an image of the template there. It's not uh, super accurate, but, you know, it's, it's quite good. Now what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to just put a little cross in like this, and that will give me a center point, okay? So this is a fairly rough way of doing this, okay? If I was gonna spend a bit more time or as I was a bit more skilled with doing this and I wanted to get a very good outcome, what I'd probably do is make a separate paper template with a hole cut out in the center, the size of this, so I know where to stick it on the back part of my mold so I can guarantee it's completely in the center. If I've got a laser cutter, the other alternative effectively is on this back part of the mold, I can actually engrave a design onto here so I know exactly where to place the piece in, okay? But effectively, I'm gonna do this a little bit quick today and I'm gonna put it on the center, which generally, as long as I'm careful with my quality assurance with my own visual checks, is going to be good enough. So I'm going to get some double-sided tape now and just cut a piece that's slightly bigger uh, than the actual uh, product that I'm going to put in and I'm going to cut around the outside this again using the craft knife. So this is a bit trickier because I'm moving the product round as I'm cutting. As you can see I've got this at a slight angle pointing towards the bottom so that I don't get any excess tape around the outside and I'll just carefully peel this off Sometimes a little bit stubborn, but we'll take that off, okay? Now, as an extra uh, quality assurance measure, what I'm also going to do is, if there's any little loose fibres around the outside, I'm going to get my file again and just file downwards and at a slight angle like this, going around the outside, you can see very small fibres of uh, double-sided tape coming off there around the outside of the product, okay? Incidentally... I've cheated a bit, obviously, because I've laser cut this circle, okay? So you could hand cut your own parts with uh, acrylic and file these up. And in some of my other videos, I've talked about cutting acrylic and uh, filing. So you can do that, but if you want something more complicated like this, it's unlikely you'd be able to do this by hand, at least on the first go. So you might need to use a laser cutter in some instances, okay? The other option, effectively, is to make your inserts out of something more compliant, like a cardboard, for example and put the cardboard in, and then if we want to get a similar sort of appearance, we can always use um, polyester or polyurethane car casting resin, the colour of the, the product, and that will make it a lot easier to produce our uh, inserts. So I'm going to carefully use my knife blade here to try and find the edge, and this can be a little bit tricky, to take off the double-sided piece, and I've got a sticky layer there. I want to make sure I don't get any dust on this, and now carefully place this in the centre, trying to make sure. And again, I could do a little bit of quality assurance here to check that that's around about the, the centre on both uh, instances. But a lot of this can be done visually by eye if you've got some level of experience. Now that is obviously about in the centre there. And what I'm now going to do is stick my next part of the mould, or adhere my next part of the mould to create this laminate, and then put another one on top, okay? So I'm going to quickly do one, and then I'll finish it off to move on to the next stage. So I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to get my double-sided tape again, cut a piece a little bit bigger, and I'm going to make sure I'm covering the whole surface like this. And literally, I'm going over the whole design, making sure these double-sided pieces don't overlap, but I'm going to keep going along 
until I've covered the whole surface. I'm going to do this on the front and the back, okay? But once I've done one layer like this, I'll turn the design over, and again, using the trusty craft knife there, I'm going to go around the outsides and carefully take this very close. Again, I'm holding it at a very slight angle like this to make sure I don't have any excess, and I'm peeling away and uh, removing any waste material as I go to make sure it doesn't build up around my design. So I'm just going to keep going around like this. You can see I've taken that part off and this part. And what you'll find is when you turn this over, we get a very, very good uh, coverage in terms of the adhesion. And this will make sure that when I stick this down, it will be very secure and it will make sure that no pewter will escape. Okay? In our last video, um, I was just uh, I'd, I'd adhered these two layers together, okay? And what I'm doing is I've stuck some tape around here, and I'm just going to peel off that last side to actually sandwich my kind of um, uh, mould parts together. Now, this is obviously going to make a mould that will cast one product, okay? So this will not, um, I will not be able to, to kind of cast this over and over again because once I assemble this and then disassemble it, the mould will be damaged, okay? If you were planning to make, you know, several moulds or several castings of the same part, I'd probably, um, rather than affix this together with double-sided tape, which is quite a permanent uh, joining method, I might use wire around the outside to kind of hold it together, okay? But because we're just doing this as a one-off, uh, a bespoke item, I suppose, I'm just going to lay that over with the double-sided tape. Now, this, this wood is a little bit bigger. I mean, I could, if I wanted, go on the band facer and kind of reduce this down, but it's ultimately the inside part is the important thing. So this doesn't really matter if this is a little bit larger like this, okay? And as you can see, that's quite well secured. Now, to be a little bit more sure that um, it's completely secure, I'm just going to open up my vise, place it in the vise like this, and just pinch this up and cinch up the edges just a little bit, not too much pressure, I don't want to damage the mould, and just make sure they're really held together. And, and as an added security measure as well, I'm going to get some masking tape, tear off a nice large section and just start placing it around the edge here where the various different surfaces are stuck together. So I'm going all the way around the shape like this and just leaving that space for where I'm going to pour in, I'm just going to tear that off there and just again fold these parts in to kind of um, secure the mould and this just makes sure that if there are any tiny little gaps the masking tape will ensure that that pewter won't flow through. Now again, if, if I applied sort of flame and stuff to this, this sort of quite flammable material, it would obviously ignite but because the pewter again is only going to be in there at a heated point for a short amount of time before it starts to cool, this may smoulder but it's not going to set light for when I'm uh, casting. So that mould now is ready to cast.